you mentioned the mentorship program, right? Do you have any apprenticeship initiatives as well? Or have you had those in the past? I like to stay a little bit more on like your take on apprenticeships. And then if you have like real life examples, whether from the past or from your current position, I like to maybe stay a little more on the uh, on the mentorship program and like get us more into like how it really works, right? You know, how you identify those leaders that are becoming mentors. You know, how do you uh, uh, determine who the mentees are and how the whole thing works? Just let us in a little more. It's a topic that I'm super passionate about. And I know that this is so valuable. So many other companies are not doing. Actually, most companies out there aren't doing. They don't have initiatives like this. And it'll be extremely valuable for you to share with us, with the audience here, like how it's done at your company or how you've done it in the past. So maybe others could inspire, you know, could get inspired and start similar programs. Um, yeah, so this is something that we are, with uh, our evolution of facilities maintenance here at GK, we're going to be moving towards this model. Uh, I did do it in the past, and when I, I did it for the past, I did it for a company called Widener Apartment Homes. Uh, and when I was there, they were in 12 states, four provinces in Canada, 250 properties. It was a huge deal. When I started, we had eight mentors in the very first class. Uh, by the time I left there, we had over 50. Uh, so we had one mentor for every five properties. What we were able to do is, you know, we saw a need for this early on. And this was like one of the first things that Widener asked me to do when I went there. What I did was I took an approach that because with the experience that I did have, right, I didn't get a lot of mentorship. I did a lot of things, trial and error. I, for a while, I will admit, you know, I was a parts changer person. It was broken. I would just change parts until it worked again. I didn't know why it broke. I didn't know how. I just kept changing things and then it worked. I was like, yeah, okay. And then I walk off and go do something else. What we did was we made sure, I made sure that there was a curriculum. There is a an actual you know, back in the day, it was a binder. We're going to be moving forward and digitizing that, you know, so it's going to be on an iPad, not in a binder. It was, you don't teach everybody everything all at once, right? You you take it and you build upon it. And so the very first thing is just understanding the property management philosophy. What is this business? What, how do you contribute to the business? Policies, procedures, all those good things. And then you go into very simple things, curb appeal uh, and things that build on to painting and caulking that build into millwork. So doors, cabinets, uh, all of those things. Then that builds into, you know, electrical, plumbing, electrical and plumbing take you into appliances because usually in appliances, you deal with both of those things. So there's a natural progression and the program isn't built to be, hey, we're going to teach this person for two weeks and send them loose in the world because you don't get the longevity out of that. You know, you don't get people who stick around or people who are very good. So that's why I said it's a four to six month program. And it is, it's some people come to you. And what I found over the years is a lot of people who want to get into property management maintenance, they come with a skill. They just don't have all the skills. So it could be that they've been painters. It could have been that they've been an electrician or a plumber apprentice or something along the way. So sometimes th there's some of those items that they already come with that might be a section that they breeze through, but they may need a little bit more time on one of the others. And, you know, to be able to not have it as rigid, to have it a little bit fluid, because everybody learns in different styles and different ways, right? Um, I hate to generalize, but a lot of our maintenance people were textile learners. We've got to put our hands on it. We've got to do it time mm -hmm. and time again. And then we retain that information and then we go about our business. And we won't do it for six months, but when it gets back in front of us, we just do it again. So that's the thing. It's built on not only the different types of things we see in everyday maintenance and really the end of that program for the trainee is to get them to be a competent turn tech or, you know, what I would call a tech one in the industry. And then they still need to build their troubleshooting skills and everything from there. But it's first time the mentor shows them how to do something and they check off a box. The mentor then talks them through it and they do it. And sometimes this is in a controlled setting or it's a make ready. But one of the things that we did say is don't teach in people's homes uh, because, you know, they can watch you do it and how you interact with people and kind of explain, Hey, this is a trainee I'm showing, 
don't teach in people's homes because it's it's not a good place to learn. It evolves all the way up to where the mentor actually watches the trainee do it and do it with confidence. Then they sign off on it. And then once they sign off on that type of skill, so let's say it's something like um, changing a garbage disposal. The rule is that the main, the maintenance mentor and the, the trainee are at the same property and essentially almost hip to hip, but not all the time. Because once, especially later on, I'd say in probably the second half of their education, they start getting skills that they are good at. And you can trust them to go do those types of service requests. And so those are the type of service requests you give them and you kind of, for lack of a better word, I say you kick them out of the nest a little bit. Hey, you've seen me do this several times. You can do this. Go grab the keys, get the service request, and, and go do it. And if you have any issues, call me. There's that natural progression that not all of us in our industry get. So that is why I built that up that way. But I realized in the beginning, um, just like I said earlier, you have to identify people that you believe would be a good mentor, but you don't tell them this is what you're going to do. You come and you ask them, hey, would you be interested in doing this, this, and this? And if they say no, that's totally okay. And But if they say yes, those are the people that you bring in. You know, we did, it was a week long session with, in the beginning with uh, the mentors when they came in, because we just went over the curriculum, but really we talked about how the teacher needs to know their student and pick up on signs that, you know what, because there are, there we all learn different ways. There are people who can pick up a an instruction manual and read it and execute it, boom. And then there are people, like I said, a lot of us are textile learners. We have to do it a few times, a few times, but once you learn in the beginning what type of learner you have, you play to their strengths, don't play to yours. And so it was a little bit, you know, getting people outside of their comfort zone a little bit and, and trying to realize those things. But once we did at Widener, before we started that program, maintenance tech was the highest turnover position in the company, um, followed short, you know, followed by maintenance supervisor. Once we started the, you know, after about two years of doing this program, maintenance tech was then the second highest retained position in the company right behind maintenance supervisor. So when you get that type of consistency on the properties, then you're able to boost the efficiency. So that is what I learned in, you know, my first, you know, actual probably couple of years of implementing that program. And now we're going to build on it even further, you know, in its next iteration, which is, um, you know, this is the thing is we partnered with a lot of vocational schools in different areas. And I went and I would talk to classes before they would come in. And we actually at, um, at Widener, we had like an internship program because we would go to like HVAC schools. And to tell you the truth, sometimes these people get into these schools and they think it's going to be awesome. And then they decide, man, I just don't want to do just HVAC, but I'm already here. I might as well finish out. What I did is I combined, hey, we have an apprenticeship program. We're going to pay you X amount of dollars for X amount of hours. Usually it was a 20 hour a week because they're still finishing up their school, right? But what we did to satisfy their school's credentials or rules, the school said that they need to work on HVAC 50% of the time. Great. Guess who got to do all the preventative maintenance for the HVAC? Cleaning the coils, changing the filters, checking, you know, checking the um, temperatures and pressures. Yeah, and it, it was a good way for them to learn. But then the other half of the time that they were there, they were in make readies. They saw our business. And then at the end, if we, you know, they gave us an opportunity. I say it was a an extended test drive. It was a test drive for both parties. You know, if if we thought that they'd be good for us and they were very interested in coming in, we made them an offer and they started out as a maintenance tech and go on up from there. That is a little bit of the difference. I think we we look at we look for people in, from different backgrounds, and then also too we put the right people in the program. So I found out early on that if somebody comes to you and they have seven years of maintenance tech experience, this is not the program for them uh, because they already have preconceived notions that they know how to do certain things, and even if somebody tells them how to do it differently or another style of doing it, they're not going to adjust. They're not you know they don't want to adjust or adapt. But when you bring somebody in and they understand that their job from the beginning is learning how to do this, then that is a much easier 
transition or some it's a much easier road for them and for the mentors the program was very heavy on promoting from within taking those you know groundskeepers reporters and putting them into this program because you know they start helping out and make readies here and there and they start doing some light maintenance here and there and it, once again it's the natural progression and my goal and this is what I would tell all of my is still what I tell my mentors and my people that I bring in you know, I remember what my career was like the first six months in. And if we can make them so much better their first six months in, then that is our goal. We, you know, to answer the questions before they need to ask them. Uh, because once again, we don't always have the confidence to ask. And depending on what kind of situation you're in, you may ask a question and the way that you were treated may determine if you're going to ask another question or are you just going to be a parts changer for a while. 